building a better a better immigration system. That's why we reformed the immigration system. That's why the immigration backlog has been reduced. That's why we're opening up our arms to those who come to this country and who need our assistance. And we're, you know, I think of what, what happened in Haiti and the quick response that this government had to the people of Haiti. Uh, what the opposition is suggesting is that we should forget emergencies and we should look at other instances. Madam Speaker, I think it's, uh, it's about time the Liberals uh, do what's right, pay attention to what Canadians want, and vote in favour of this bill. Let's get it to committee and make it better. Um, the, when this uh, debate resumes, the Honourable Member will have two minutes of comments and questions, but as it is of 5.30, the House will now proceed to the consideration of private members' bill as listed on today's order paper. Private members' business, consideration of motion 574 on Alzheimer's disease, standing in the name of Mr. Rajat. Mr. Rajat, seconded by Mr. Kalandra, moves that in the opinion of the House, the government should continue to address the rising financial and human costs of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia in Canada by ensuring now and in the future that its programs and policy development related to this issue continue to recognize the right to dignity and compassion of patients stricken by such conditions, the emotional and psychological toll on family members and friends of patients afflicted by such conditions, the increasing costs imposed on public health systems by the treatment of such conditions and the role played by such civil organizations as the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, Neurological Health Charities of Canada, in furthering our understanding of the impacts of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Edmonton, Leduc. Well, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's, uh, it's truly an honour today to stand in the House and address this very serious topic of Alzheimer's disease and what we can do about it, not only in this Parliament, but across the country. I do want to state at the outset, uh, Madam Speaker, I am not an expert on this issue. That is not why I'm addressing this topic here today. I'm addressing it because I believe it deserves uh, a discussion in this chamber, in this Parliament. It deserves a national discussion. And I think all of those people who are suffering from this disease and all those people who are suffering with people who are suffering from this disease deserve to have a national discussion on this topic in this chamber. Madam Speaker, I do want to outline a bit of the current situation that we have here in Canada. At this time, approximately 500,000 Canadians have some form of dementia today. Over 60% have Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common form of dementia in Canada. It is becoming a much more noticeable issue. There is not a Canadian I have spoken to who has not had some personal, uh, personal contact with this disease, either through a friend or a family member. We do therefore need to address this issue. We need to sustain our focus on it. There has been an increasing awareness in society and I would say in the media on it as well. And I would point to a recent Global Mail series, which I thought was very well done. And I would certainly like to commend them for raising awareness and for generating discussion on this issue. We need to have this discussion now, Madam Speaker, to plan for the future and to develop an approach to what will be one of our biggest challenges facing us as human beings and as a country in the years ahead. This is an issue that demands attention from society in general and from parliamentarians in specific. And the reality is clear. Individuals with dementia are not the only ones affected by these conditions. Dementia, in fact, places a long-term burden on those who care for them, on family, on friends, on our public health care systems, on society in general, and they must all be addressed. The Alzheimer's Society estimates that the total economic burden of Alzheimer's and other dementias in Canada today is approximately $15 billion per year. The emotional and the psychological costs on patients and their families are immense, but as we all know, they're very difficult to quantify but all of us have spoken to people who have talked of, of the challenges facing this disease. The fact is that demographic trends will contribute to the scale of the challenges we face in coming years. As our population ages and individuals live longer, an epidemic of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias is poised to overwhelm our health care system. The fact is that without new policies, breakthroughs or interventions, it is projected that by 2038, over 1 million Canadians will have some form of dementia, which is more than double what we have today. The annual cost will rise from $15 billion today 
to a staggering estimated $153 billion by 2038. Demand for long-term care will increase by tenfold from today. In light of these very startling figures, we need to foster a national discussion. We must work with the provinces and territories who obviously provide health care services. We must develop a very comprehensive approach to confront this issue. What has been done that thus far, Madam Speaker? Well, through the Canadian Institute of Health Research, our government has invested more than $176 million in research on Alzheimer's disease in recent years, spending approximately $22.7 million in 2009-2010 alone. The government is also working with Canada's major neurological charities, and I would like to commend all of these charities for their work. They have com committed to providing $15 million for a four-year population study of Canadians affected by neurological conditions. This study will help us better prepare to meet the needs of Canadians affected by these conditions. In partnership with like-minded countries around the world, Canadian Institute of Health Research has also developed an international collaborative research strategy for Alzheimer's disease. It will help enhance relations between Canadian scientists and Alzheimer's researchers around the world, and I want to commend this action taken in this area. Canadians also have access to compassionate care benefits under the employment insurance system, and the CPP and QPP also pay disability survivor and children's benefits to those who qualify. The Income Tax Act also provides for a caregiver amount tax credit, a tax credit for infirm dependents, as well as a medical expenses tax credit. While these are all steps in the right direction, a continued focus is required to learn more about the implications of dementia for Canadian society and to developing appropriate responses. What can be done, therefore, Madam Speaker? First of all, in the area of research, to address the challenges that these conditions present, we do need some new approaches. Alzheimer's and many other dementias are irreversible. There is no known cure at this time. However, through biomedical, clinical, quality of life, health services, and knowledge translation research, we can develop new and more effective responses. In this regard, we should continue to support the work of such excellent organizations, and I do want to commend them for their work, the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, their Neuro Neurological Health Charities Canada and post-secondary institutions which are partnering on research like the University of Toronto Centre for Research in Neurodegenerative Diseases, McGill Centre, University Centre for Studies in Aging and the University of Alberta Centre for Alzheimer and Neurodegenerative Re Research. In the second area of what can be done, Madam Speaker, is prevention. Prevention obviously is the least costliest and best approach it is estimated that a 50% increase in the level of activity by Canadians over 70, 65 years would result in substantial reductions in the incidence of Alzheimer's and other dementias. Reducing the number of di people diagnosed would ease the burden, obviously, on family members, on friends, on long-term care facilities, community care services, and informal caregivers. The potential benefits from investing in research are therefore extraordinary. If we can delay the onset of Alzheimer's and related dementias by only two years, the CIHR estimates we will reduce the cumulative cost over the next 30 years by $219 billion and reduce the number of new cases in Canada by over 400,000 people. The third thing in terms of what we can do is, is I, would, I would suggest the most important from a human point of view, which is support for patients and their families, with demand for long-term care projected to outpace the availability of space, more and more care will be provided informally in the home. The number of hours of home care provided by Canadians is expected to more than triple by 2038. We need to ensure that there are programs and services in place, therefore, to support caregivers. Possibilities can include better access to information and educational resources, the creation of new financial supports for patients and caregivers, and continued support for nonprofit groups that provide assistance. Almost every member here today can point to a friend or family member who has been directly affected by Alzheimer's and related dementias. Whether they know a patient or someone providing care for a patient, one does not have to look far to see the impacts of these conditions. In time, Madam Speaker, the situation will only become more urgent. That is why it is vitally important that these issues be brought to the forefront today. The Alzheimer's Society released a study earlier this year which was very aptly titled The Rising Tide and I encourage all members to read that report. It is an excellent report. I would also encourage them to read the uh, report by 
entitled A Brain Strategy for Canada by the Neurological Health Charities. Both of these documents are excellent foundational documents which we can build on in this chamber. Madam Speaker, inaction will result in the overwhelming of our public health systems and it will only mean that families will continue to struggle to keep their heads above the rising waters as demands for private care increase dramatically. That is why we do need to act now. That is exactly what the Alzheimer's Society is asking of all of us as parliamentarians. I therefore call upon all members of this House and all four parties to support this motion and I welcome their questions at this time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Etobicoke North. Madam Speaker, he was 80 years old and they had been married for 60 years. He kept his... Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Etobicoke... I should have been clear. Uh, L'Honourable Député de... The Honourable Member for Verchères les Patriotes for a question or comment. Yes, I have a question for the member for Edmonton Le Duc. In the motion he presented, the member refers to programs and policies that the government, the federal government, should bring forward uh, based on certain criteria in order to fight against Alzheimer's disease. And I'd like to know if in referring to these programs and policies, the member has borne in mind the programs and policies the government wants to bring in uh, within the Parliament of Canada's legislative jurisdiction uniquely, the Honourable Member. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his question.